how can I help others grow in Christian life? She's helping him. She's helping him. She's assisting him. Now, at some point, he can't even reach what I've given him to do. So before this thing ever started, I knew that he would need some help, right? Now, the subject today is, are you a... Um, um, I'm so sorry. Are you a stumbling block or a building block? I just want to know what you're doing in here. Are you the person every time the church gets to a certain level, Satan uses you to just... It's amazing that, that some people, had this happened to you, you would immediately say, I'm done. But if you watch the children close enough, failure doesn't mean stop. It just means it's time to use the same thing and build it another way. How many people in here been knocked down? No, how many people been knocked down before? In front of somebody. And was it embarrassing to get up? Yes, it was embarrassing. But through many dangers, toils, and snares. Somebody here is able to say, I've been down here before. God, I thank you. I'm still alive. God, say it. I thank you. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Let somebody laugh at you, but they're laughing because you're alive. Reset. Okay. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for being with us. This is Enthroned Body of Christ Church. This is Pastor Ricky Rush, and we are live right now uh, here at the Dream Church. That's right, the Dream Church is a part of a ministry at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church that caters to, that listens to, that understands, that helps develop and create a wonderful atmosphere for that, that uh, super group of millennials that were all millennials. We got to think of something else now um but the millennials of our ministry have come together to say there is a different format a different formula and so after we hear the sermon on sunday mornings uh then we're able to come together and kind of digest it a little bit talk about it a little bit what was what what about it moved us what about it um has inspired us what, what about it um uh, was relevant was the message even relevant today you know sometimes maybe you go to church and you go hmm i don't know what that one was about so here in the dream church we get a chance to take it away from um from from one different view and give it another different point of view and this ministry has so proudly uh in the name of jesus created what we call digital evangelist with an as digital evangelists meaning that there are times when um now we're becoming more and more bold to talk to people about the lord in um in uh, different formats uh through a lot of different social media and with confidence and being able to ignore negative uh, comments, but at least put your narrative out there about what God has called us to do. And that was go out to all the world and preach the gospel. And I am so super delighted tonight, this evening, for one hour, we come to you every Sunday evening. And these young people have come together every single week. And y'all, we, we are so overwhelmed and grateful and thankful uh, for their consistency. That is a word that, I, I just cannot thank God enough for, and we have a tremendous crew behind the scene that could be taking breaks, could be out eating, could be resting, could be so, doing so many other things, but they have committed every week to being here, and I just want to thank uh, 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 K uh, K K Kaden and Kyan and K K Clang Clang and Clang Clang Hunter and <laughs> Deacon David Bowens and Brother Elijah Freeman, uh, uh, Big Elijah, and Brother Neil, and uh, Brother Skia, oh, and of course, helping. Oh, my dad. Uh, Big Elijah, yeah. <laughs> like, and uh, coordinating us every week, making sure we're coming together, Brother <laughs> Reverend Michael Thompson. You know, and this crew has been just superb. Of course, not to forget, um, backing that whole crew, Brother Joshua Bowens, and, and making sure that we all stay on top of every piece of equipment. <laughs> And, and, and Brother Joseph and, and Brother Antoine Edwards. See, that's a lot of guys behind the scene. I can't really see them. But I always sometimes just like to open it. We don't do name calling around here a lot, but we're just grateful. So before you 
we came in, we've been having this discussion. Um, we're right now on a series of lessons here at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church, uh, and, and we call this series now, It Happened at Church. There was a man in the Bible that was healed, and um, we know all about some of the healings, and we're going to go real serious into this. And I, and I challenge you to join us uh, even on tomorrow night and next Sunday, every Sunday. We're going to dive into what happened in church. And I just asked that question. So if you see a book or something, um, we have the panel here tonight. Um, and some kind of way now, I think it'll be okay if we start to open up more to those of you who would like to ask questions here. We're going to ask our technical supporter, um, uh, Brother uh, Stevenson, to try to come up with a format, maybe even next week now, so that if you have some questions about these things, because now we're going to go into them pretty seriously. Wherever you are, if you'd like to ask a question um, uh, to the panel, then you can send it to us, and we'll have a way for you to do that next Sunday. Uh, I guess we can create that by then, um, and have you have a chance to be with us in that discussion. Let's jump into this real quick tonight, because I don't want to I don't want to cut us off. Thank you all. I know you were tired and you were sleepy, and we had a double dose of word today. Uh, we had to come back. What, what, do, we, what do we call it? Uh, Supersize service. Well, we said, okay, if you came at 8 o'clock, come back to 10 anyway, or wherever you are, listen to that word again, because God now is just pouring some things on top of us. And we started talking about the, 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 the prayer life of a Christian. Now, I don't know, because I don't, I'm, not, I'm not in my 20s or my 30s, or my 40s, and I'm going to stop right there. I'm not in a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> However, um, we, we, we are challenged uh, with our prayer lives. I made a statement this morning that um, sometimes you, you could be praying, but maybe you're not praying big enough anymore or big enough now, uh, which means that maybe our faith is not as strong as we think it is. Sometimes tragedies, um, Attacks, I like that word, uh, disappointments can cause us to go off of a deep, deep end quick. You know why? Maybe we thought we were strong enough to handle what the enemy threw at us until it hit. We talk about it, we look at it, we listen to other people, but when it becomes personal, where are we in our lives? How fast are we to retaliate? How quick are we to say, God, I can fix this on my own? And the enemy is kind of sitting around waiting to say, okay, that's maybe what happened to so many of our dreams. Uh, uh, we thought that we had the capacity to think of our own dreams. And so we went as far as we could imagine. And then when it didn't happen or something didn't develop, we learned that maybe I didn't dream big enough or give this thing a big thing to God. I said this morning, uh, anything that you can handle on your own, you can do on your own. But when you want God to get involved, a lot of times you might need to give God something to do that you know is impossible. And it just keeps us checking with him and getting closer to him um, so I'm gonna I'll go back now we we were on this discussion before we came in about if you hear someone say it happened at church because the story that God is breaking down to us and the Bible study that we're going into in the book of St. Mark's the third chapter and Luke the sixth chapter talking about a man with a withered hand it happened at church but if somebody said that to you uh, panel, I'm gonna throw it out again. Let's just let's just run with it, and we'll go from here. If somebody says to you, "It happened at church," what what would that initially say to you in 2021, uh, April 25th, 2021? What would that initially, if you say, "It, hey man, it it happened at church," I know the question would be what, but why would someone want to write about something happening at church? And don't y'all write about it, whoever's listening, because Pastor Rush is gonna do that. <laughs> what would that mean? I okay. believe, or I think initially, it would sound like something negative because when you're thinking about newspapers, when those were popular, and you're thinking about headlines, they always wanted some catchy, attention-grabbing um, headline in order to get your attention. And normally, when people jump at it, they think, ooh, scandal. That's what it's about to be. But I think realistically, it depends on your expectation of church and why you come. Um, so if you come to just sit back and spectate, you might be, um, when you hear it happened at church, you might be waiting on that thing that went wrong or something negative. But if your motives are pure and your heart is right, when you hear it happened at church, you're thinking about a testimony happened, a breakthrough happened, comfort happened, healing happened, um, praise happened. So I really think it depends on your expectation of what you expect from God. Somebody else say what you think about that. If you just heard that, 
it happened at church because that's where we are now. Oh, what if you had a T-shirt? You just wore it around everywhere you went. But hey, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Okay, hit. Um, when I think about it happened at church, I think about miracles. Okay. Um, a lot of the times, you know, people can, can be, um, people would get very sick. Um, they might have breast cancer or they might be sick within themselves, like mental illness. And so, you know, somebody might ask, well, how did you get delivered? Well, it happened at church. You know, I kept going to church. Um, somebody prayed for me or um, I just went to the altar and now I'm healed. That's what I think about. You're young adult, you're young Christians. You're, you're sold out to Christ. Um, you're sold out to Christ, yet we all deal with something that was withered. And we've learned this morning there's a whole different biblical perspective on that word was withered. Uh, that means you weren't born with it, but something we contracted, something you picked up. Go, go for it. When I hear it happened at church, the word happened pops out at me, which means uh, somebody has came through something. Um, it has to be, whether it's good or bad, you've came through something. Okay. I've got a scripture here, James 4 and 2 from the Living Bible. It says, the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. Now, someone is going to say, well, I've asked God for a lot of stuff that I didn't get. The reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. But before that, part of that scripture, it goes into stop looking at what you see other people have, what you see other people doing. How many people right now are in jobs, in homes, in debt, in cars, in anything because they saw someone else with it? And you didn't ask God for that. You desired what you saw and you thought, well, if they have it, I can. How did they get it? Have you ever thought about that? Did they ask God for it or was it left to them by someone? Did they accidentally have it? And do they not like it even though you like it? Is there, is there a possibility that someone has something that they don't like and um, you could desire it and get it but can't afford it or keep up with it? The word of God says you don't have what you want. The reason, that's what it says, is that you don't ask God for it. So how many of our prayers are going unanswered because we just won't ask God? We never, you never had the, the boldness to say, God, I want, boom. That's a bold statement. Now I want somebody to jump in on it because I'm going to ask a question about a book that, that we read a few years ago. And we're going to see if we can turn this corner and maybe we can have an a reintroduction of something that we need as we reset. How did we get here? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going into another question. Somebody, anybody want to come in on that? Okay, I was just trying to figure out, have you ever asked God for something, that, you know, that was just big? I mean, just, just huge, just. Yes, sir. Um, Brother Billy spoke on tithes and offering uh, one of the dream churches. And you also spoke on supersizing and just had a leap of faith of giving my largest offering today after a service. And I also asked a specific prayer from God. I was like, God, I want you to give me a call from my mechanic. I want him to call me and say that my car is fixed. I want him to call me and say that it's time for me to pick up my car. I don't have to necessarily use my mom's because she's been excellent supporting me with transportation. I said, God, I just, I just want him to call me today after church and I'll be back on the road in my own car. And sure enough, I gave the tide. Oh. I, I said that prayer. I said, God, I don't know how he's going to fix it. You know, I don't know if he have all the tools he need. I don't know if he have enough money to take care of it. But God, today I want that call. And guys, I got a phone call. He said, hey, man, um, your car ready to be picked up. Uh, I was supposed to call you tomorrow, but I just felt like calling today. And I was just like... I look. I was in the car. My mom. I said, "Yeah, you, this the mechanic." I was right at her house. I had went bust that U-turn. I said, "We're well, gonna pick this car." Up. So I just give God glory for that. And in, in the scripture, Malachi three at ten, it said, "Try me in this and see it. I won't pour out a window blessing." And it's it's just amazing to uh, to see God actually do what He said. And it, it matches your faith. I mean, your faith has to be aligned with what you're praying for. And I just give God glory for the word he put in you, Pastor Rush, the, the confidence you spoke with in spite of the things doctors might say and all that. Just to hear when you, when you said that, I don't know what you're going to do after you speak that word, but I want to encourage you to, um, to try God 
in a, in a different way this time. Um, increase, supersize your prayers, because immediately when your faith aligns with what you believe, it's going to start happening. Yeah, and, and I want to say something about that. Thank you, and to God be all the glory for that. Some when um, when we oh by the way, if you have a question for this panel, I'm telling you these awesome young people at IBOC are the bomb.com. That's what you want to dial. The bomb.com. No, if you have a question seriously, or you'd like to make a statement to the panel, you can right now on your on your cell text to two two three three three. And just ask your question. Just go IBOC, text IBOC to 22333. All you do is IBOC, 22, you guys know what that means. Text that question and it will pop, it'll pop up right now. Uh, text, text what now? Send the IBOC message first. Send okay, send, yeah, send the IBOC message first. Then, then send your question and we'll know. And we will screen your questions, okay? We're not here to debate anybody, argue for us. We just want to open this thing up a little bit more now. IBOC, 22. 333 text um, IBOC. Now, uh, when I talked this morning about, I, I never revealed in the, uh, this before. And like I said before, even my family for the first time, anybody had ever heard. And it got, just moved on me. Uh, today is a day that you'll, you'll say some things. Sometimes we wonder why God doesn't speak um, immediately. He always speaks immediately. He just opens up a passage. Sometimes we're not ready to receive what God's saying. Um, and I'm going to say this. I've never asked God for anything that God would say no about. Sometimes God says, instead, and hold up, I got to get you prepared for what you think you want. So this morning, uh, there was a statement made by one of my doctors, and I showed the examination, and everybody to the church, and, and it just said, you know, I asked during that time. I never filmed that to ever be played to anyone. We never filmed that for that. Or we just were getting some documents. And he said, you know, this is not going to get better. You are, gonna, you are degenerating in it, and yada, yada, yada. And I asked him, and I said, when? Well, it, no, it will never get better. It is going to get worse. And so every time I've gone and said that. Now, that didn't happen like this month or this week. That happened like two years ago. And the reason I say that is because since then, I walk in a faith that says, okay, I can share with you what I, there are things that people just don't know that you're dealing with. And when people make attacks in your life and they, all those things, it's like God has held me through things that I never knew I never told anybody but God. And, and so he has strengthened me. And that was to only say that I had to become a reflector of his light and saying, now, can I work through you, Ricky? Can I, can I, can you praise me knowing that at any second that could be the last hop, skip, jump that you could have, you know, and all of us in this life as a Christian, we have those kinds of attacks. But we have that kind of faith. So it wasn't a new thing. That was probably well, that, ex that particular x-ray thing we did this morning, maybe two years ago, which means that we walk it out. We keep walking it out. Um, and so once God shows us that he can provide for us, then it's our responsibility to say, okay, God, use me. And that's why sometimes when people complain, we just go, okay, but do you really understand what someone else might be encountering and so it all happens at church for, for me I don't jump around anywhere like I jump around when I'm at church you know I save mine you got brother Carlos Lynn always says I got one good run left in my life and I'm gonna save it I'm like Carlos you ever go jogging oh no you know no I'm gonna save that <laughs> so I just want to Thank you all for being a reason. See, you Dream Church, you guys are a reason for people of our generation to want to know that we're going to be healthy because your prayers, your faith, and sometimes we just have to stand through things and say, hey, we've, we've gone through it, and we understand, and we have to be very patient. You don't look at me, and I don't look at you every week and say, y'all, please have mercy on me. The Lord already has. So the first thing I said when we started this was thank y'all for just letting me sit in on this panel. I don't have to be in on this panel. This group right here can take this on its own. And just the thought of saying, sit in here with us so we can just, you know, have fun and we can share it and make it, make your generation meet our generation. And we understand and we're not afraid to text 22333 
you know, text to Ibach, and, 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 and to, you know, we're not afraid of that. We were so intimidated by that. Man, when we started this dream church, we were so into, I was, and I'm going to speak for everybody over 50. <laughs> we were so intimidated about electronics and all of that, and now we act like we can't even decide where we're going to eat without looking at something electronic. So thank you all for helping us to cross this. Now, I want to get back into the discussion about um, uh, what we talked about. I, I think the reason that we don't see God do big things anymore is because we don't ask for big things. To me, y'all, coming back in church, that's a big thing. Unless a person's never been in church before. I want y'all to please talk about that. Please, how big is it that we're back in church and we're praising God? And we saw healings happen this morning in this church. We saw it. We saw it. People experienced it. And it was done at the work of the men or the women of God here under the Holy Spirit's direction. And it wasn't one of those things where I said you were healed. And no, no, God did it. And he's still doing it. Why? Because we had him do some big things. Big things. And God said, then open your mouth. You don't have it because you're not asking me for it. And I'm, okay, Lewis is about to talk. That, 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 that. There we go with Lewis. <laughs> okay, yeah, Lewis is live. <laughs> So for me, um, the big thing about coming to church is I've been going to church since I can remember, so 15 plus years. So when church just stopped, it was like, oh, yeah, well, let me not say stopped. You can't come into the building. It was like, a, okay, now I got to watch online. And watching church online is not easy because you got waffles over here. You got your bacon over here. Mm. And you laying in the bed. So it's like, all right, now I got to figure out how to watch church and stay awake. So coming back to church is a very big thing because there's a spirit within this building that you cannot match at home, in my opinion. It's, it's just so many things that can happen inside this building that by yourself, yeah, you can try, but it's like just to know that your brother or sister got your back that's next to you, it's like a, one of those just feelings. It's just like, all right. So I know I'm safe in this building. That's my Boy, keep talking about that. Anybody? I want to piggyback off of what Brother Elijah was saying about, you know, between being at home, watching online, and being in the building. Like, when we were totally online, I live by myself. So it's very different <laughs> watching online. <laughs> yes, I'm tuned into the word, but you look to the left, look to the right, there's nobody there with you. And when you're in the building, you have that camaraderie, that fellowship, being amongst your brothers and sisters that is unmatched. Like that connection with people is so important, even when diving into the word of God, just feeding off that energy, how the Lord utilizes that energy to heal, to create miracles within just the service like today. So that's what I have to say on that. Okay, now somebody asked a question here. Thank you for dialing in. Uh, but no, you can hold the mic because you may be able to answer this. The question was, we don't, we don't ask for things, and thank you whoever you are that wrote this question. We don't ask for things maybe because we're afraid that we won't get what we ask for. Okay, so now we're going to step into that just a little bit because the, the, the word of God said that if you don't, you don't get it because you don't ask for it. So the first thing the enemy wants to do is to tell you that you're not going to get it period that creates a fear now remember when we ask God for something you're asking for God to deliver something to you that perhaps first of all he he put in you to speak it forth because if you speak it forth now it can be manifested manifested let's just go back to some simple things now since we're since we're raising up and resetting manifested means making something that is invisible become visible if i said boy i wish i had a happy meal right now and i reach my hand out like this see i don't have a happy meal but once i said it <laughs> that worked out just right this comes straight from mcdonald's <laughs> mcdonald's right so this is a happy meal the reason i have it is because i asked for it now let me say this 
it might sound like, ah, okay, so that's just a little kid joke. No, really, it's not. I asked for it because I know that when I asked for it, I believed I would receive it. I already knew it was here. So you got to know that when you ask God for something, you already know he has it. God doesn't have to stop the world, go and reorder something. You did not create anything. You just spoke something into existence that God has already created. And if I said I want a Big Mac and I do like this, see, I, I, and now I have a Big Mac. If I want to say I want nothing, then I open that up. And that's what I have, nothing. You shall have what you say. If I say I want a large fry. Large fry. Large fry box. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the whole fun part that we had this morning was saying sometimes we're giving God these Happy Meal orders now, guys, and we have developed. We, we, we at this time ought to start trusting God for bigger things. And you'll have bigger things when you ask God for bigger things. But don't ask for it because someone else has it. Then that's a jealous thing that you're asking God to get into your competitiveness with. And that's, that's not what he's there for. So I love that question. I'm afraid to ask God for something in fear that I won't get it. Ask it anyway. And then ask God through faith to strengthen you to believe Okay, he said, you believe you shall have. And if you believe you have it, God says, I'll make it happen. All I need you to do is, is get the wheel in motion. How do I get the wheel in motion? Use your mouth. Use your words. Faith cometh by hearing. And sometimes you need to hear yourself ask God for something. Is there, is there anybody? I, I, can, I can go on with that. Now, this panel is not always here for me to talk, but sometimes we have these discussions. Say, Pastor, can we talk on that? Because we're going to break down the word. Here comes Sister Elizabeth right now. She is going to put it on us. Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so this is a little personal, but I wanted to uh, share this. And the part when you said, um, ask God to strengthen you to believe. I had went to the doctor one time, and he told me that uh, – I had a, a mass in a certain area of my body, and it was in the uh, stomach area, in the abdominal area. And today, uh, Pastor Rush, or God had called all of the sisters in the church uh, forward to the altar that were having any issues in their abdominal area or their stomach area. And it was so crazy because it was so, it was random, but I knew that it was for me. So I had... I had just went down there, um, and I had the pain for so long. It was probably about two or three years uh, where I was experiencing that pain, and it was on both sides, and I didn't know why. So I had got so used to the pain to the point where I just kind of started to accept it. So yes. when I prayed, yes. my belief, it wasn't all the way there. Um, so I was just praying. Uh, I was just praying a prayer, but there was no belief behind it to back it up. So nothing was happening. And I think that's why nothing was happening, because I didn't believe that it wasn't going to work. Um, so that's why church is so important to me, because you have people around you to support you and to guide you and to teach you. This is how you pray. This is how you um, ask God for faith. I didn't even know you could ask God to uh what did you say? I didn't even know you could ask God to strengthen you to believe because we already have faith as a gift. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to share that. Beautiful. And, and we and we have to ask God to strengthen our faith. That's how that's how you go from owning a Happy Meal to a Big Mac because he's just stretch it. You know, that that Happy Meal could do good for a while. But after a while, uh, you get a little older and you get a deeper appetite. And see, the wonderful thing about the miracle workings of the Holy Spirit is that there is not a sister in this building who's been delivered today, who was healed today, that's not going to, Satan's going to come back and test that area now. Oh, you feel that pain, so it must not have worked. That's a lie from hell. It does work. And I can stand here and say, I'm, I can feel a pain in my life every single day and still believe that I'm healed. Who else can go through what we go through after being attacked and supposed to kill us, but we're still functioning? And that's what makes people call you fake, because if you are as sick as you say you are, you ought to be showing some signs. That's a sign that God is healing you in spite of how you feel. So one of the questions was, why do you think, um, why do you think God doesn't answer our prayers? Um, that depends on your level of faith. God always answers our prayers, but it depends on what you're trying to get God involved with. 
Okay, I'm mad at so and so, and I wanted to hit a tree. God's not gonna get involved with that because when God answers prayer, it's gonna your, your His answered prayers are going to build, they're gonna bless, they're gonna comfort and strengthen someone. And if you're gonna ask God to do something that's not gonna edify Him, He's not gonna get involved with it. If you say, God, I want a car, God says, Okay, got it. You're gonna get a car. Now you gotta go get your driver's license. You gotta be legal. Okay, um, and in some cases. God will show you through your finances how to save for that. I mean, he's, 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 he's doing that. And so it might take, you want the car tomorrow to go to, out of town with your friend. God wants you to have a car, period. But if, I guarantee you if you kind of change the reason why you want a job or why you want money or why you want a car, uh, it will help you to understand the process of getting it. You want it to go out of town with your friend t tomorrow. God says, I want you to have it so when you go out of town with your friends, you can minister to people. Or maybe you can start picking people up for church. Your motive t sometimes has to change. Um, because if your motives are selfish and it becomes that thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven, it becomes I, 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 I. The Lord let me witness this morning for the first I've never witnessed in this ministry um, women that you've never met just lay hands on a sister. Now the, now, the wonderful part is she can't turn around and say, thank you, baby. And the woman can't say, oh, sister, so-and-so prayed for me and I was here because she didn't know who touched her. What they know, what we know is that God used somebody who was available. He used someone that was available and whoever walked down that altar, I believe because of the word of God that they were healed and they came to get it manifested today. I just believe that. And uh, so another question was, do you, do you need to sow a seed every time you pray? And does the seed have, does the seed, oh, go, go, go ahead, please, 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 please. No, no rush, Pastor. This oh. is blessing me. When I think about, um, that, those, that's a wonderful testimony, Sister Liz, by the way. When I think about um, it happened at church, I think about an increase in my faith. I think about in church, I have learned to sustain I've learned to increase my faith. I've learned to stand on the scripture in Mark, the 11th chapter, the 24th verse that says, therefore, um, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you that it is received and it is yours. I don't think that um, Satan will try and neutralize our minds saying, oh, we're not getting this right now. We're not getting what we pray for right now. Sometimes God will sustain us and develop us and mature us to receive that blessing, whatever that may be. So is it that we didn't get it or are we still in our waiting period? I'm gonna piggyback off what you just said because uh, right when he, asked, well, right when the question was asked, it was an uh, example that popped in my head from many times with Pastor Rush with just because you asked for it, maybe you're in the wrong position with like, with like with the football. You can just, you can be passing it right here, but you're over there. You have to make sure that you're in the right position to receive your your or receive whatever you pray for. So it's more like make sure that you're in the right position to receive your blessings. And I'd love to come right after that. It's so great. Um, Pastor Rush talked about the scripture this morning in James. Um, and so in that same chapter, um, James 4 and 3, um, and I want to read it from the New Living Translation, it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Mm -hmm. And it was really powerful mm -hmm. when Pastor Rush just said mm -hmm. that. It's important for you to see how, um, you know, I always like to think of a tithe, and Pastor Rush has talked about this time, um, time and time again here at IBOC. We don't just tithe our money, but we tithe our what? Our time. Mm -hmm. Because a tithe is a percentage of giving God what back to him what is his. It's important to note that when you're praying, it's important that you are convicted in your heart to know this. Everything belongs to God. I, and let me say it again so you can hear it. Yes. Everything belongs to God. You, the clothes on your back, the trees outside, the very materials for which we make money and possessions and homes, they belong to God. It is his. He is sovereign. We serve the king, not a king. 
We serve the king. So imagine if you were the son of a king, and would you not be able to take advantage of everything in the kingdom? It's the same. And so if it's hard for you to understand and it's hard for you to get over the doubt, doubt in your heart, you have to understand that God is willing and he is able. The Bible said it's, it's his good pleasure to give us those things. And so what I want you to consider is how can you give back to Christ? How can you give back to God? It's important to know you can have whatever you ask, anything you ask you can have. It's important to know that God wants to give you more than you can do. It says he's able to do more than you can even ask or think. And so the real question is, since this is a partnership with you and God, you want something, he wants you to have something. The Bible says he gives you the desires of your heart. Those are not accidental. Seek how those things can be a service to God, because I promise you this, if you become a dispensary of blessings and grace and provision for God, the provision will flow through you, because if you seek first the kingdom of God, not some things are added, not only the things that you ask are added, but all things are added. And so if you, wanna, um, if you want the loophole to get what you want, the question is, do what God says his word won't return to him void. So seek, Lord, how can I serve you in this job? What can I do for you in the kingdom in this job? And watch God provide it for you. You got to shift your motives a little bit. Shift how you see it. See, we see blessings for ourselves, but they're really an opportunity to show forth the glory of God to people who may not even be able to see him. See, the thing about Pastor Rush when he talks about a reflector, sometimes a reflector is there is because the angle of the light can't be seen from that person, but they can see the reflector. So if I see the reflector here, but the light comes from here, well, I can't turn my head to see the light. But when you give God the opportunity to be the reflector, you can show forth light to someone who otherwise would be unable to see it. That's a good thing because somebody just asked a question and, and and I may even let you have answered that. It says, how do I overcome my fear of praying in front of my coworkers? Now, I'm going to give one answer. Y'all can give another answer because we got a bunch of answers to that probably. I say pray for your co co coworkers in private first. And, and it, I don't, why is it important to pray in front of them? You know, ask yourself, what is my motive for praying in front of them? Do I want to show them that I can pray or do I want to pray maybe to God? and watch the results uh and if you you know maybe overcome a fear of that d d don't do it in front of all the co-workers <laughs> maybe pick you one and <laughs> practice practice prayers prayer is practice prayer is speech is conversation we talk a lot now because we were able to talk when we were younger and we didn't mind making mistakes around people and somebody corrected us and so we picked up bad words they said don't say that like i can't i i fear and what if you know, all those things that cancel your, they, they cancel your, um, uh, I can go to McDonald's right now and say, I think I want a, um, a Big Mac. It's not going to happen because I'm still thinking. And they say, is that one Big Mac? Well, 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 wait. No, I said, I was thinking about it. So you, you learn certain words and then you just increase as you go on. Practice, just practice. Practice prayer is, is just practice. It's conversation between you and God. So if the coworkers don't want to hear it, they don't need to. If you're asking God for something to bless someone, to help someone, to become wise enough to encourage someone, that's good. That's a good question. And I think that's kind of like where we were going here. And the next question says, if you don't know exactly what to pray for, for example, what if you don't know what exactly what to pray for? Uh, what if you want to own a business, uh, but know nothing about owning a business? Then ask God to give you the desires of your heart if you want a business. Now wait. Now wait. And then you have to ask yourself, why do you want to own a business? Uh, why don't you want to work with someone else to get a job done? And show yourself responsible for, for A, saving money. Uh, B, being a good steward of that money. Uh, C, uh, learning a trade while someone else is supporting you. Uh, there are so many reasons that you could own a business, but that business can fail because you may not have gotten off to a, on a good solid foundation. Uh, how do you, let's just take it easy here on this one. How do you own your own business? Do you even know how to mind your own business? You want to own a business, but what about your own business? Are you a good steward with what you have on your own? Do you pay your bills on time? 
or, or do you find yourself lacking? Do you go in over your head? There are a lot of things that you have to consider sometimes. And then you say, God, I want to start a business. God says, now, the first thing I want you to do is be consistent with the business of taking care of God's business in your life. He'll use you for it. Now, whatever your business is, you may, I don't know, people in business may start four or five different things. I don't know. I think it's important. Everything you just said is obviously correct. I, it, it also, in addition, when you're looking for that opportunity to become a business, and also um, I, I remember you just a second ago talking about someone wanting to pray um, in front for of the coworkers. coworkers. Right. Um, I invite you to invite the Holy Spirit into that conversation with you. And why do I say that? Because um, one of my favorite scriptures about the Holy Spirit is John 14, 26, and it says the following, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, here's the key word, and maybe I hate that I didn't think about it last week. It says, he shall teach you all things. Yeah. And then it says, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so it's key to note that there's a difference there. He says, I will teach you all things, comma, and then it says, I will bring to the remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you, which gives, it's twofold. The first thing is the Holy Spirit can teach you anything. There's another scripture in the Bible that says he'll teach you the mysterious things, the secret things, things that people don't know. Sometimes we see inventions or we see ideas and like, we're like, oh, that person came up with an idea. I want to remind you of your first comment. God owns everything. They, they didn't come up with an idea. The Holy Spirit revealed something to them yeah. because he will teach you all things. But the second thing is, to the point of it happened in church, I will bring to or he will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. If you are not in the position to hear what God is saying to you, then the Holy Spirit can't bring it to your remembrance. So it's key to be in the place where the things are going forward. And so sometimes it seems like you sat in this two hour service and I can't remember everything I heard, but I promise you, if you rely on the Holy Spirit, he'll bring it to your remembrance in time. So what you're really doing is you're, um, it's kind of like the internet. The more stuff you get on it, the more things you can call for it later. So when you're not connected in the church to hear what God has to say, it makes it difficult for them to remember it, when you, for you to remember it when it's time for you to pray for your coworkers. And in that conversation too, sometimes God, uh, we want God to give us a business. And how many times will God bless us with something that becomes a distraction? Now I'm too busy. I, now I don't, uh, I, I can't go to church. I, I, I really can't do Monday school. I can't listen to the sermon. I don't have really time to pray. Sometimes after we ask God for something, that thing that God manifests in us, he's waiting on us to be mature enough to handle what we ask for. And that's, man, there are so many ways and so many things now if if I had to go back 30 years back and start over now that I've learned some stuff, of course, hindsight is 2020. But if I had to go back, there are th there are some ways and things that I owe now. Maybe I would have done that different or this different. But that's because as you go, you have to keep seeking God for the next turn. And it's not that it's not sometimes the road it's the speed we travel. You know, a bumpy road is a bumpy road. But if you go over one of those speed bumps going 60, that's a new muffler. <laughs> you know, it's designed to make you slow down. <laughs> but the speed bump doesn't say slow down. It's just, it's just a bump. And all it takes is that first one for you to realize, okay, I can't handle that like that anymore. We have evolved in so many ways that we do ministry, so many ways that we grow in the things of God. Now, it's, it's just changed. And they have been great changes. I don't mean negative changes. They've been great changes. This very concept that we have here right now, me sitting here talking to a group, which used to be just in the group. Now, you're somewhere, wherever you are, and you're writing questions to us. It has changed the way we have been able to reach out. What a confidence builder. We used to think that if we don't see people, people weren't there. Wrong. Wherever you are, you are there. We are here and we are communicating and this is awesome. Thank you all for this. Now, now let me, let me, let me go into this one thing that I see here that, we're, that what we want to ask about. And that is what if I ask God for something and now I'm asking God for something and everybody's looking at me and it didn't happen. God, I want you to bless my sister, my cousin, my something and do this. And I don't, I don't know any examples. And all of a sudden now it doesn't happen. And so now we're uptight because as we look here, it says, I put my reputation on the line by opening up my mouth. I should have just been quiet and asked God in private or in silence and not get it. First of all, your silent request is going to produce nothing. He said, when you pray, say. 
prayer is a conversation, okay? So when you say it, you don't have to be concerned about your big mouth messing up God's reputation. He's, he's big. He can, he, he, can, he, can, he can handle it on his own. And, I, and I, what if I look like a fool if God doesn't come and bring me through? What if I look a mess? God is not disappointed when, when you pray for anything. When you pray for an increase in your life, God's not disappointed. Um, I told people that God was going to heal me, and now I'm throwing up. Okay. <laughs> That's a process of living. And now you just say, and in Jesus' name, I cast that out too. So, so he's listening, and he's a keeper of his promises. If he says he's going to do it, y'all, he's going to do it. If he said it, he's going to do it, and you can count on that. It is the enemy's job. It is always Satan's job. It is our flesh's job to make us doubt what he said. We were talking about this book that came out some time ago called May I Have Your Order, Please? And it's just a simple step of God saying, can you just tell me what you want? I don't know how many of you have ever been parents, but that's a, sometimes that's all a parent is saying. Just tell me what you want, baby. Just tell me what you want. You know, and then the parent can decide if you need it right now or not. But they just sometimes want to know, what do you want? Why aren't you smiling? Why aren't you happy? Why are you complaining so much? You have everything that I have. All you have to do is ask for it. And that's what God is saying. So then we go through that process of saying, okay, God, here it goes. And God said, now, start with something that you believe that you know I can do. Because, I mean, you can't ever not talk to God and now somebody has stage five cancer and you walking in saying, all right, stage five cancer will scare you. An asthma attack from a child will scare you. So I suggest that you start by just thanking God for letting you get to lunch. God, show me today before lunch. Show me where you are. Let me see your presence. And then you look at a tree and go, thank you, God. I saw that tree. How? With the eyes you blessed me with. It's a, it's a big gratitude thing that kind of goes on. Um, so we, we kind of talk about that. So that, that being bold, you got to open your mouth and be bold. Open your mouth and let God feel it, you know. Just, just try him. Get used to it. You're going to look strange. But please, everybody, don't draw back on what you ask God for. Don't. He'll strengthen you to get ready for it when it comes. I see another question coming in here. Oh my God, this is good. How do you know? Um, how do you know God wants you to receive what you prayed for? Um, we just we just mentioned that a minute ago. Um, you're not going to pray against for anything that's against God's will. Um, I want to change, but I don't know if I'm ready for change in my life. Uh, how do I deal with that? Anybody want to jump on that panel, y'all? Yeah, we can come with this now. I want to change, but I don't know how my, I don't know if I'm ready to deal with change. See, that's a prayer. God, I want a different level, another type of healing in my life, but I don't know if I'm ready for it. Then ask God to prepare. I'm, I'm, go. There I go. I was about to go into that answer there. Um, I think I can relate to that personally. Um, you wanting to change, but you don't know where to start. You don't, you don't have the desire to do it now. Um, what I can say is stick close to God, first of all. Just keep praying. I had someone tell me that at work one day. They said, just keep praying because I've, you know, I've got my own issues. And I was like, God, I want to change, but it's hard, you know. Um, keep praying for one. Stick close to God and um, just stick close to the word because when God sees your heart and he knows that you have that desire that you want to change, he will honor that. Okay, I see you're trying. You're making an effort. So now let me do my part. Um, it's a scripture that it says, um, when I'm weak, he's strong. And I think um, David was talking about that one day in Psalms. Um, we all get weak. We can't, we can't change on our own. So if we have the desire to change, God will give us the strength to change. Eventually, change will come. Um, one thing I will say is don't force change, um, especially if, if others around you are saying, you need to change, you need to change, because that change will come. You know, if you know you need to change, you're aware, you recognize that you need to change. Um, the change, it will, it will come, because eventually you'll say, you know what, God, I want to do better. 
you'll be like, okay, start with that one thing. I know I have an issue. I cannot get up on time in the morning. I struggle with that. I told God, I said, I want to get to work on time early, have that 15, 20 minutes where I can come in uh, and feel yeah, yeah. You know, but for myself personally, just fill the building with my smile. Go around yes, and speak yes. to people. Um, so I said, okay, I got to start with that little thing, which is going to bed on time. I've been working on that, you know. So when God sees that, he'll, he'll honor that, and eventually change will come. Um, don't pressure yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself, too, not too hard, because, you know, you won't be able to do it. You'll start to suffocate when you start to force change. Just allow God to work within you and change you, and I promise you that change will come. I love hearing y'all talk. Y'all are so inspiring. Y'all are so inspiring. I'm, I'm, Sister Liz, I'm going to let you talk on this in just a second. But here's a question. Somebody said, is it wrong to thank God in advance um, for unseen blessings? Let me say something. That is one way that you can tie God's hand. Thank him before you see it. God says, if you can thank me before you see it, I'll guarantee you I'll let you see it. So, no, there's absolutely nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, according to the word of God, that's one good way. You ought to start your prayers by thanking him for something that he's already done and thanking him for what you've asked him for. Now, remember, it's not your idea to ask God. That was his idea. <laughs> okay. So when you don't ask, maybe you're being disobedient. Just a thought. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just love hearing y'all. Uh, so to piggyback off the uh, last question that you had, um, I remember when I first uh, started growing in my relationship with God and um, I had to choose between one thing and I had to choose between God, but I knew that I couldn't have both because if I had one, then that would kind of set me back with my relationship with God to the point where I probably wouldn't even want it anymore. Or um, I would choose God, but I really wasn't ready to give up everything um, that I was doing before. So it was a bit of a struggle, but I remember uh, one Sunday, Pastor Rush had preached a sermon, and it said something like, God heal me, or it was either God heal me or help me in this area of my life. And whatever that this area of my life is, ask God to help you in it and when I asked God to do that for me um the desire for that thing it didn't go away like right away but it did take some time but eventually it went away and then I started to have the desire to want to grow in God more and I think that the desire to change is a great start um and I no, that's good. That's yeah. good. So now there were some other questions, but you were kind of okay. going fast. Keep going. I got this this hour, boy. Okay, okay. Goodness so. gracious. <laughs> I, I try to jump in because y'all are so expressive. You're so great when you talk and you have so much to say. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. Keep going. <laughs> Okay, so then the praying in front of your coworkers. Oh my goodness! I'm, if you if you gave me a microphone a year ago, I would probably <laughs> I'd probably throw them. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I would pass out. Now, you know we heard that right? You I'll probably throw it. The mic is still on. You know, but, I'm no, sorry. go ahead. No, that's good. But um, just like Pastor Rush said, it's good to start off small, even if it's for a child. Just pray for a child or pray for just one adult. You don't have to start off big and just ask God to. Um, help you before you get up and pray. Ask him to help you to not uh, be impressionable or to not prove yourself to anybody because I think that I was too focused on that. Like, I want to I wanna let people know that I'm intelligent. I want to let people know that I'm able to pray, but it's not about that. It's about allowing God to speak through you because somebody needs uh, the prayer that God is going to speak through you. So um, usually... If I'm feeling uh, fear or doubt, I have to go straight to the word, even though I don't, I don't always feel like it. Um, it's a great way to conquer whatever you are afraid of. And two of the scriptures that I stuck with was Matthew 634. And it says, so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then it was the second scripture was Philippians four and six. <laughs> don't worry about anything. What is it, Pastor Rush? Don't worry about anything. Okay, there I we don't go. Know what she said. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about anything except pray about everything, and you know, ask God, ask God for what you need. It was something like that, oh, but okay. yeah, I think that's it. And He'll supply all your needs and all that good stuff. Hey, so listen, you just did something. You encouraged somebody. Um, 
some some of some of you listening may think that this panel practices all these are uh, young adults and grown ups, young 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 adults, grown ups who th they're they're not uh, orators, they're not licensed ministers, they're 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 just like you, I, everybody else, which is children of God. And with her saying, I mean, I'm serious. I remember giving like her a mic to just say anything. I, she's so, Elizabeth is so cheerful, jolly, that you think she could just walk into any situation and start talking, and she, she's not. But now, the consistency of what this has been has increased her courage. Now, let me say this. We do look forward to bringing those of you who would like to come into our dream church atmosphere in. We're just being very cautious about that. We do want you in this atmosphere, in our church that God has provided for a dream church, um, the building, I'll just use that, uh, and to eat with us. And uh, you know, I, 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 we see this as a place at 6 o'clock to just have brunch, lunch, and chat in the Word of God. And we don't have to necessarily, we'll keep, sending it through the internet but there's nothing like you being in this building with us so we're going to open those invitations and ask you to help others to come in and the courage comes when you know as we said before when you know you can fall and there's someone that can catch you you you'll have courage and if you know you fall and you know god will catch you if, if that baby's walking and he's wide-eyed and wobbly as he comes toward you and he falls and he catches you that baby's gonna get up and try that thing again because now he doesn't fear falling. He has courage for the net. He understands that he probably wouldn't fall and he wouldn't even try to walk if he didn't know you wouldn't catch him. So that's a lot of courage and thank you. And that's why I love hearing from these guys. This is, none of this stuff is premeditated or thought through. It, it's all from the heart and it's, and it's especially wonderful. Um, anybody else before we get I'd ready? I'd like to say one okay. more thing. <laughs> Drive it in. One of my favorite Boldly. stories. Make your, make your mask off a little bit. Yeah. One of my favorite stories in the Bible about someone who prayed um, and got what they prayed for. Um, and it had a huge impact, not just on them, but on, I mean, on us even today as we talk about those stories is um, King Solomon. Um, king Solomon was a uh, son of David. We all know David, Goliath, all the people, right? And he was king. It's great. Um, and so one of the, the one of the ways that he talks about, we see what happened there um, is in 1 Kings 3 and 3. Now, for those of us who are familiar with the story of Solomon, I know I was. I mean, Pastor Rush just preached about it before. Um, so I was familiar that, you know, the Lord asked him what he wanted, and he said, he could have said riches, he could have said all these things, but he said, I want wisdom and I want knowledge. I want to know how to lead your people. But one of the things that really impacted me after I went into the Word and read it was how he got God's attention. And so there's a, there's, there's a, there's a place where we want to pray for things. And there's a place where we want to really, um, you know, ask God for things. But what if, what if you could get God to come to you and say, what you want? What is it that you want? So I want to I want to take you there. It's just two, it's just two verses. So stick with me. Um, again, New Living Trans New Living Translation. 1 Kings 3 and 3 says, Solomon loved the Lord. So the first thing I want to ask you is, do you love the Lord? I don't mean like, you know, God cool or whatever because he helped me get what I need. That's a genie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a magic spell. That is, that's not loving the Lord. So the first question is, do you love the Lord? The second thing it says about Solomon in this scripture is that he followed all the decrees of his father. And specifically in that David was a man of God's own heart. We see the links he went um, to, to further the word of God. And we know that um, eventually Jesus comes from the lineage of David. So it's important to know that are you following the precepts of Christ? Are you following what God has asked you to do? And then it says the difference was, it says Solomon offered sacrifices and burned incense at the local places of worship he offered sacrifices and burned incense 
at the local places of worship. And so when I saw sacrifices and incense, I was like, uh, both of them? Like, what's the point? Um, it says in the word that our, pray, our praise and our, our utterances unto God are like a sweet scent unto him. So when you are praising God and when you are really focusing on him, you are essentially filling his throne with pleasant scents. So imagine your favorite perfume and imagine it's just a cloud around you. That is what your praise and your worship is to God. So do you love the Lord? Are you following what he's asking you to do? Are you willing to sacrifice? And that doesn't always mean money. For a lot of us, it does. If you're looking at this and like, oh, they want our money, then he's talking to you. You know why? Because money has your heart, not God. And so God wants your money because that's the way to your heart. That's how he one-ups it. So if you're thinking about it, then that's that. If you're thinking, I tithe and I offer all the time, then it may not be tithes and offering for you. It may be service. There may be something you need to do in the local place of worship that God needs from you that only you can do. There's a place in the Bible where, it, I'm going to come back, I promise. It says that the, the parts of our body that we think are not significant are the most significant. So if you think that you have a gift that isn't that big of a deal, I would wager to bet it'd be a big deal to someone else. So I'm, I'm going to come back. He offered sacrifices and burned incense um, in the local places of worship. The next scripture says, the king went there and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings. Now, I don't know what he sacrificed. I don't know if 1,000 was a big deal or not, but what we do know is that he did something extraordinary for the Bible to capture it. So not only was he there consistently, not only was he listening to what God had to say, not only did he have a love for the Lord, but then he did something over and above for the Bible to capture it. And it says, the next scripture says, that night, not next week, not next month. He did something crazy for God while loving him, following his directions, and being in the place that God would have him to be and giving him praise and worship. Then he did this thing. And it says that night, it's my favorite part, y'all. I'm getting real excited. It's my favorite part. It says that night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, What do you want? If you don't believe me, Google it. New Living Translation. What do you want? And the next thing he said, ask, and I will give it to you. So if there's someone out there who is really looking for God to do something big, maybe something you haven't seen, maybe something you haven't heard, maybe something that doesn't exist in your family, maybe something somebody said isn't possible, here is a five-step plan according to the word of God that you can follow to get God to ask you, what do you want? The question is, do you know what you want? And what's interesting is Solomon at this point, I mean, it's God, could get anything he wants. And you know what he did? He asked for something that, yes, would help him, but would help him benefit the people he led. So before you get ready to tell God what you want, think about what you're asking and can it help others? How can you bless others? Because if we all focus on blessing others, then we'll all be Bless God is too big for him to be just, yeah, he's huge. And you're thinking about you? You're not even, you make, make God work, make him sweat, make him get out of bed. <laughs> he did for Solomon. And to this day, thousands of years later, we are still talking about him. Amen. He is still acknowledged as the wisest leader. Even people who don't believe in God study what Solomon says. And that's the impact God has the ability to do if you will follow what he said. I'm sorry, it's my favorite scripture. Thank you. Favorite sermon. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for that input, and I'm always excited. Um, now you, you all understand why we have such a, such a passion for young people in the Lord who grew up in God, who go against the odds and get up after being knocked down, and they come out swinging. And they become what we so fondly call now digital evangelists. They're able to reach so many people. Um, everybody's not wounded, hurt, and broken down. Some people are just walking the life, living the life of Christ, and being encouraged and strengthened daily in that walk. Everything that's done here at Dream Church is done to build, um, to strengthen, comfort, to help. And I thank you for just listening this evening. So here are a couple of things that we want you to be able to do with us. Um, one of the services that we're going to be having here at IBOC is Mother's Day service. Well, it's on Mother's Day. Um, if you are a mother and you'd like to attend service in a space wide enough for
for your safety. Maybe you haven't been in church. Or maybe your yeah, mother what? is still alive and your mother is, um, you know, with you and she can go to church with you. I'm trying to keep this real simple. And you want to bring your mom to church. Uh, you want to bring her on Mother's Day, second Sunday in May. You can right now, before we get off the air, you can text IBOC mom, IBOC mom, okay? But you send that to 31996. Don't call the church with it. Send it right as a text message to 31996. And you just text two words, IBOC mom. That is going to ask you, we're going to ask you about five or six questions to make sure that we're ready for you and your mom and your family if you need to and have everything away space so that you can be a part of this congregation. It's going to ask you, fill out A, you want to come at 8 a.m. service or B, 10 a.m. service. So you put A or B and we'll give you some sections that you'd like to sit in. We offer that because it is extremely important. That's going to bring me into this next uh, conversation, not conversation, as we end, uh, talking about the women's fellowship that happens at IBOC. It's virtual, yet now we have women who will come together on uh, May the May the 5th. Okay, it's the first Wednesday of May. And you're going to have a chance to experience hearing from women of God who who have done some unusual things now, like how do you take care of an aging parent who's transitioning? That's kind of like something we don't want to talk about. But when it happens, um, what has the church done to prepare us for that? I'm going to tell you what God has done. He's given us the people in our congregation who have had to experience it, who have a wisdom and a knowledge. As Brother Stevens mentioned, like Solomon, they've, they didn't have the money perhaps, but they said, God, what can I do? Show me how to do this and then we're just going to have several conversations we're going to have conversations with with women of God who are being used right now in the prime of their lives to care for people who have fallen and it's it's going to be one of the most inspiring nights that you will be able to uh, to witness in a long time so I'm going to invite you to that please don't be so in a hurry in your life that you forget that God is strengthening us now for someone else who's going to get weaker. And if we don't get weak first, that weak person needs to know that, that, that they can fall on you. And God needs you to know that he's prepared and giving you the strength and the resources to help someone else. Well, I thank you tonight. If you would like to give an offering tonight, um, if you're one of those people who say, God, you know, whenever I can not just sow a seed, but water a seed. If I can just water what I have in the ground, when anything hits, blessings, trouble. God, I've got seeds in the ground and I keep watering them. That's why we give and that's why we know that we deserve to receive because that's what he has promised us. So you can do that as we end this prayer. And also tomorrow night, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to not just challenge you, but we're on this series now that says it happened at church. And I know coming in with a subject as powerful as it happened at church, yeah, somebody's going to try to take a worldly approach to it and all of that stuff. We get it, 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 we get it. But we'll not be shut down to talk about this wonderful thing that happens when you walk through the door of the church. Miracles, fellowship, prayer, strength, encouragement deliverance happen when you come in church yes we know it can happen outside of the church but wow someone can save your life on the street but boy you guarantee the recovery if you can make it to the hospital <laughs> okay thank you for coming to the hospital and thank you for being with us on tomorrow night. Why don't you just step in the building live? You get off work, the sun's kind of shining. Drive on up to the church, come inside, or be with us online for Monday school. We're, we're in it now, and we are definitely determined to reset. And that's why the dream church has to stay lit. 
All right. So why don't we uh, close out with a word of prayer? Somebody want to bless us, bless our offering, any of you? Because you're some praying, motivating young people. Thank you. Sister Armstrong, we're going to ask you to take us on out. Lord, thank you for this word today. Um, thank you in advance for the healing that you're going to give to everyone who was just in obedience for tuning in tonight, God. I ask that as we prepare to give this offering that you return our faith and our prayer life to a childlike faith and a childlike prayer life to where we honestly believe that we will receive whatever we ask for and that you widen our imagination and our vision in order to give back to those prayers, Lord. I pray that as we sow these seeds, encourage someone to give more than they normally would um, and have the belief that it will be given back to them even more than what they gave, Lord. We thank you for our hedge of protection. We thank you for this service and that many more are to come, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom and growth that we continue to see, receive every time we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. She said a child life. Oh, God night. God bless you. Thank you, Father.